All right, what's up, folks? January 8th, 2017, I believe I said 2016 for the uh, regular NBA report. So this is the Celtics report, but it's 2017. My apologies. Uh, as for the Celtics, they came into 2017, speaking of that, and they've been 3-0, and continuing that momentum after they beat the Heat uh, right before uh, New Year's Eve. They are on a four-game winning streak, extended into 2016 with that win against the Heat. Of course, 8-2 and two in their last 10. Uh, a lot of things to go into with the Celtics. Of course, Isaiah Thomas put up 38 last night. It was a pretty quiet 38. Uh, a lot of the points were padded on late by New Orleans, sending them to the line, even though New Orleans was out. But hey, you know, Isaiah Thomas will say thank you. As we've said with Isaiah Thomas, his number is very similar to Damian Lillard, so keep an eye on him for the All-NBA team. What's most impressive with Isaiah Thomas, uh, over his last 10, 32.8 points, but 51.3% from the floor uh, over his last five games. He's dropping just shy of 35 points, 34.8. Look at this, 54.7 from the floor. 58.5 from three-point land. Now, the entire Celtics team has just been blistering from behind the arc. Uh, that's certainly been a key to their success of late. However, you have to temper that because they're not going to be shoot. I mean, last night, I think they shot over 50% from three. They uh, definitely did one of the games. I think against the Jazz, which was their most complete uh, game all the season. We're going to check the Jazz right now. They were absolutely on fire from both they were 55.4 from the floor 54.8 from three they've been making set over 17 three-point shots in a bunch of games in a row right now uh they're uh, isaiah thomas has been great at the line uh that's just another thing i noticed but yeah against the jazz they were 54.8 from three-point land Sorry, we got the computer messing around again. Last night, they were hot from behind the arc. Going to bring that up in just a second. My apologies. All right. Last night against the Pelicans, that was a nice victory. Um, Isaiah, as we said, dropped 38. They out-rebounded the Pelicans as well, 42-47. to 47. A Rebounding is another thing, 50% from three-point land. They were only 43% from the floor altogether, uh, 18 of 36. Very nice there. The 76ers, that was a bit of a scare game. Um, you know, they got off to a sluggish start but came away with the victory. 47.5 to only 42 points. Or 40.2% from the floor out rebounded the Sixers by one. Of course, the three point percentage, while you have to worry about it because they're going to cool off, you're not going to shoot, you know, 55% from three point land. As long as they shoot around 40%, they should be good. Rebounding has improved uh, thus far this year. They were out rebounded by the Utah Jazz, not by much, but they out rebounded both the 76ers and the New Orleans Pelicans. You can say what you want about the quality of the Pelicans and the 76ers. Of course, the Jazz was a marquee victory, the most complete game of the season, as far as I'm concerned. But the Pelicans do have Joel Embiid, and they do have Anthony, or the Pelicans and the 76ers. 76ers have Embiid. The Pelicans have uh, Anthony Davis, of course. So out rebounding those teams is no easy task, and they're able to do it. So hats off to them, especially on the offensive glass, getting other opportunities. I think that's really helping them. Marcus Smart starting to come along. Of course, Avery Bradley is injured. Let's see how long uh, both of them can keep it, how long Bradley will be out, and how long Marcus Smart can keep it up. Of course, the schedule, we said they're home heavy. Big, big game Tuesday against Toronto. Going to go north of the border. Love to see them get that one. Uh, they have the back-to-back -back Tuesday and Wednesday at Toronto. Washington can be a difficult game. And Friday at Atlanta. Atlanta is on a nice winning streak. The Tuesday game is NBA TV. The Friday game is nationally televised against the Atlanta Falcons. So two or three on the road. Let's see what they can do. I'd love to see them get all three of these, to be honest with you. Uh, they're up to 23 and 14. The first 20, they were 12 and 8. So they've already exceeded uh, 10 wins. So they'll be over 500 for the next 20. They're thus far 11 and 6. They can sweep this week. That'd be nice to go 14 and 6. But you'd like to see them at least win 12 out of every 20. That's, of course, 60%. They only need one of these next three. Uh, after that, you got three straight at home, Charlotte, the Knicks, Portland. Then in Washington, Houston, and Orlando coming in. 
Milwaukee on the road, Detroit at home. That closes out the month. So as we said, a lot of home games. They're starting to play better at home. They're up to 10-6. and six. Uh, Very favorable schedule coming up. A uh, win against Toronto would be nice. Can get, I mean, they're right there for the second spot. This is what I tell you. This is why I get frustrated when the Celtics lose. I'm not hating on the Celtics. I see a lot of potential with this team, especially with the way Marcus Smart is playing. I think their offense is really clicking. Uh, Utah has a very good defense. They were able to take it to them. So the, uh, as long as they keep marching on, this is a ve- this is a good team. This is a team that I think can make noise. And I uh, would love to see them get that signature, real signature victory over Toronto. Of course, they beat Utah. They've let a couple slip away. But let's see what happens moving forward. So all in all, it's looking very good for the Celtics. As we said, 8-2 and two in their last 10. Really starting to come along at home. And let's see if they can continue to make strides here into 2017. All right, remember, we appreciate all subscriptions, and we will see you all later on. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.